dated my husband for three years, then got married in 1969. And in 1970, I had my firstborn, my wonderful son, Joe. And when he was two years old, I came to Canada in 1972. I grew up like a lot of teenagers do, you know, in Toronto, coming from an immigrant family background. We grew up on uh, Sterling Avenue in Toronto, across from a junkyard, and we had gangs and prostitutes and pimps on my street, and I didn't know that it was a bad area. <laughs> Got into a little bit of trouble as a, as a young person, started to form some habits that, you know, affected me for, for a long time, and was just living like, like a lost kid. And so that was my, my street life, but, but my home life was really good. There was a really strong sense of family, and that came through in everything we did. Everybody used to call me Smokin' Joe, and they kind of knew me. That was me. You know, I had this tough persona. I was into heavy metal and rock and roll and all that kind of stuff. And th th that, that's who I was. The doctor had told me not to have any more children because uh, my muscles were so soft and weak. And then, you know, somebody told me, oh, there's this place you go and you pray, you get healed. And the... A young man was praying for, for people to get healed. And he touched me, and I got healed. I felt like a gratitude in my heart to just thank him. Lord, you're so real. Thank you. Thank you for healing me. I started to watch 100 Huntley Street. And David Mins was on, talking. If you need to make sure you're saved, you call the prayer line. And I called, and this wonderful lady came on the phone. And she took me through the scriptures and why Jesus came. The point of him coming was not just to heal you, your body, it's to heal your soul. It was like life changing. My eyes go, oh, I, you know, I prayed the, the sinner's prayer. I said, I repent. I didn't know, Lord, that you're so good, that you not just healed me, you saved me. When my mom first got saved, I never heard that term before, didn't know what saved was, you know, coming out of a religious background where, you know, you knew about God, but you didn't know God. And she was so fresh in her faith and so zealous in her faith that out of humility and love and concern, she would just share the gospel with everybody. So I saw a huge difference in her. There was a process in my salvation. Um, I started going to church, overhearing the messages that our youth pastor would preach and that he would come and take me out for meals and just connect with me and hang out with me and not judge me for who I was. The kid who tried to have long hair and all these crazy heavy metal buttons and I wore black all the time because I wanted to show people how bad I was, you know. And then somebody introduced me to a Christian band called Striper. You know, and they were heavy, they had long hair and earrings and tight clothes and screaming guitars and all this kind of stuff. And I thought, what in the world is this? And they were talking about, you don't need drugs. You don't need to drink, you don't need to smoke. You know, you can have God's power in your soul. He's the rock that makes you roll. And that was the moment that hit me. And as they began to sing those words that you can have his power in your soul, I said, God, I don't know who you are, but I see these guys have you and I want you the same way they do. And I just, I prayed and I said, are we good? And from that moment on, my life has never been the same again. Karen is a perfect person for me. God so knew what he was doing. He knew the type of person I needed to journey this life with. I mean, how do you get from being a youth pastor in a small Portuguese church in Toronto uh, to doing what I'm doing today in one word, you know, God. A friend said, I believe you really need to go to Israel. And if you go, we'll, we'll sponsor the trip. We'll send you to Israel. And I reluctantly said yes. I got off the plane and I can't explain it. But when my feet touched the ground, I knew I was home. And standing on top of Mount Carmel, up in the Haifa area, looking down into the Jezreel Valley, which we call the Valley of Armageddon, God really spoke to my heart and he said, if you want to know me and really understand me, then you've got to know this land and the people who live in it. First Century Foundations went on the air in 2005, and we began showing people Israel as it really, truly is. 
It's amazing because it all started back at 100 Huntley Street. Back in 19, I think it was 84, 85, my mom was searching, looking for something, got me into church. Here we are, how many years later, God brings me back to the Crossroads family, back to 100 Huntley Street. And I'm sitting here telling people my story, but it actually wouldn't be possible without 100 Huntley Street being on the air. And to this day, there are dozens of us who have come to know the Lord and have, are involved in ministry and are living a godly life. And it's amazing to see all because of one person and a change that God made in their lives. And I want to encourage people to, to ask God what, what He would have them do, because I really believe with all my heart that this is something worthwhile investing in. Huntley Street was there for me. I thank God for everybody that was, that makes it possible. 